again. Right? Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, I was uh, talking about the environmental biotechnology, uh, 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 how uh, and what if industrial biotechnology are used more widely. Uh, in so uh, industrial biotechnology, if uh, wide, morely, um, uh, widely, uh, in every sector, uh, uh, in an efficient manner, we can have a clean environment in this earth. So this is the uh, most advantageous uh, point. Uh, environmental biotechnology, new biotech tools for cleaner environment, you know, lots of new tools are discovering and worldwide, uh, for example, in Europe, Japan and USA, uh, uh, the way we are handling the industrial waste, they cannot do it. They have the affluent treatment plant based on environmental biotechnology to minimize uh, the toxicity, toxicity or hazard present in the uh, industrial waste, even the household waste as well as municipal waste. This is, this is why their environment is clean. And there are lots of, you know, literature, uh, how they are efficient uh, in different, you know, uh, wastewater treatment or energy uses. Uh, the superiority of environmental uh, biotechnology, not only these literature, these are some literatures, uh, you can find how they are superior. So uh, in many uh, literature, it has been uh, uh, published and every day if you uh, check the Google Scholar or PubMed, you can find new literature uh, that is environmental biotechnology is superior to the chemical and other, uh, you know, uh, industrial uh, conventional processes. Uh, obviously, you know, the application of env environmental biotechnology is still limited because our knowledge uh, uh, in this subject, especially the biology of microorganisms, as well as uh, apply them uh, in, in the practical field to make genetically engineered microorganisms. Uh, you need to know the function of all genes. So we are now in the genomic and post-genomic era, post-genomic era. Uh, so uh, we are getting new information uh, every day new genes are discovered uh, and new techniques for engineering the microorganisms are also becoming prevalent. But there are some limitations also, for example, uh, you, uh, you know, all uh, countries uh, are not ready to accept uh, or use the, uh, uh, this technology. Uh, some, uh, you know, rich country like Europe, they have the restriction for GMO, but poor countries, they have the limitation of knowledge. Uh, Sagan Marguli is uh, um, a garden of uh, microbial delights. Uh, uh, there is a nice statement. All of the elements crucial to global life, like oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, carbon, return to a usable form uh, through the intervention of microbes. Ecology is based on the restorative decomposition of microbes and molds, acting on plants and animals after they have died uh, to return their valuable chemical nutrients to the total living system of life on Earth. Uh, it is interesting statement and very valuable statement you can understand. Uh, for example, human being, we consume lots of, you know, uh, food in our lifetime. But when we die, uh, our body goes to the, uh, you know, soil and we become the part of the, uh, you know, uh, soil. And uh, uh, within a uh, few years, uh, body convert into all biomass in our body convert into the uh, humus and uh, again, uh, plant can uh, update 
uh, the nutrient released from our body. This is not only for human, for all living organisms. And uh, this recycling process is going on and in the earth. So uh, a better understanding of the crucial players, microorganisms in, involved in uh, the cycling of oxygen, cycling of nitrogen, cycling of phosphorus, uh, sulfur, carbon are very crucial. Uh, most of the uh, microorganisms are involved there, but you have to find out the superior most microorganisms to use them as a commercial tool for, uh, you know, accelerating the waste treatment process. And the power of uh, modal bacteria, the first multicellular organisms do not enter the fossil record until uh, about 580 million years ago. This is after about five sixths of life's history have passed. Bacteria have been the steers and keepers of life's history. Very interesting point. Uh, you would be uh, wondered to know that in human body, uh, we are carrying uh, three to six pounds of microorganisms. Among them, bacteria are the largest. Uh, bifidobacteria, uh, lactobacillus, these two uh, genera, genera are uh, abundant in our body. And their total amount, I told you, uh, all the microorganisms, including archaea, uh, three to six pounds uh, and uh, our intestine, uh, all the, you know, guards and different uh, armpits or other uh, places in our body, they are colonized, uh, they form a biofilm and tightly adhere to our body and uh, uh, living there. Uh, so our body is the ecosystem of three to six pounds of microorganisms. If I tell you another story, you will be wondered how many species uh, an adult human uh, is carrying. Uh, Cambridge University Human Microbiome Project confirmed that uh, nearly or more than 150 species uh, are living in our body, uh, inside or outside. And what they are doing, they are uh, actually uh, symbiont. They are commensal, they are not harming us. Uh, only very tiny percentage of the environmental microorganisms are pathogenic. Uh, in human body, 99.9999% of microorganisms are beneficial. What they are, uh, how they are beneficial? They uh, enhance the immunity of the uh, human uh, boosting the, uh, you know, uh, immunity uh, by triggering the uh, immunity-related gene expression in our body. And they produce lots of, you know, uh, good materials uh, to suppress the pathogen as well as help us to digest the uh, food that, that we are taking. So uh, they are very useful. So if you consider human, uh, a human body, if there is 150 species uh, are uh, harboring there uh, and they are playing uh, important role for uh, the growth and development as well as disease protection of human. Uh, you can imagine in the earth, open earth, even agricultural field or environment, uh, water bodies, how many microorganisms are there. So they are incredibly powerful uh, uh, tool. Uh, the most important job is to discover them. Uh, if you ask me how many of them are known, we know very little amount of uh, the total microbial diversity available in the earth. And as I mentioned, even the same species, uh, one is human pathogenic, another is human uh, health beneficial. So uh, they are genomically 
are genetically incredibly diverse even in the same species thousands of uh, strains are uh, thousands of different with thousands of different properties so discovery of microorganism and mining their uh, power is very very important tool uh, for environmental biotechnologies to utilize them for the human benefit and uh, as i mentioned human carries lactobacillus b52 bacteria uh, scientists discovered them and now in european countries and many developed countries you can find probiotic capsule or tablet one probiotic capsule or tablet contains 2 billion bacteria so if you take uh, those capsule every day one uh, you can uh, uh, keep uh, your uh, intestine or microflora rich as well, uh, as a result you would not suffer from gastric or other indigestional problem so they are very uh, important not only uh, you know digestion they are keeping you fit uh, they are keeping you healthy you know in usa the biggest problem is non communicable disease obesity obesity means to become fat so it is a, it is the biggest problem uh, in usa uh, because they take lots of junk food and uh, they become like this and there is no medicine uh, to treat them uh, but uh, uh, a few years ago scientists discovered that if intestinal microflora of non obese people uh, can be transferred to the obese uh, uh, intestine uh, for uh, about uh, three to uh, five times uh, they found that obese uh, person gradually become non obese that means microorganism really really a crucial uh, player uh, helping us to uh, uh, be fit to the environment and keep us health uh, uh, you know uh, but to maintain our health uh, in a sound way uh, not only uh, human uh, it, it happens in case of all multicellular uh, organisms like eukaryotic organisms plants uh, or cows or you know uh, the fishes uh, or the animals so uh we know very little about them and uh, as a result environmental biotechnology is still an emerging uh, uh, subject where are they found diverse environment as i already discussed a lot virtually every environmental niche uh, environmental microorganism a microorganism can be found in even an extreme environment i visited you know 45 countries once i visited uh, university of bergen in norway and i met one professor his name is nils and he showed me one microorganism uh, they discovered from the hydrothermal vent of uh, uh, you know of the uh, volcano hydrothermal vent in the uh, deep sea and uh, they collected the sample by using robot where temperature was you know more than 100 degrees celsius and he discovered that archaea not bacteria uh, archaea uh, which is a new family and that archaea can grow only if you offer it more than 100 degrees celsius 110 degrees celsius is best another surprising story is that it can grow at 1 ph 1 ph means can you imagine it is like you know uh, hydrochloric acid so uh, it, uh, it can grow extremely uh, your, uh, uh, your high ph high temperature high salinity so some microorganisms have such a power so if you discover those extremophiles they are called extremophiles then you can get an interesting enzyme as well as the gene that you can utilize for uh, tackling the global climate change that is global warming can introduce into the plant then high temperature would not be a problem salinity would not be a problem drought would not be problem ph 
acidity is, uh, would not be problem. So they can present in extreme pH and salinity, extreme of temperature uh, and pressure. Uh, without air, there are some uh, organisms that are anaerobic, can grow in uh, without uh, uh, you know oxygen. For example, organisms living in our intestine, our intestine uh, is an anaerobic environment. So uh, they can grow even in anaerobic condition, growth on many chemical substances. As I mentioned, they can love to eat the petroleum uh, or many other chemical substances they use as the source of energy. So you can find them in the chemical polluted environment. And then you can utilize them to create those uh, uh, chem uh, chemical waste. Attached to surface in biofilm. This is most important point, biofilm. Biofilm is a thin layer of microorganisms. Uh, the good example is uh, in our teeth. Our teeth, we need to brush uh, every day twice at least uh, uh, because bacteria, some of the bacteria, uh, they love uh, to make biofilm on our teeth. And uh, uh, then they start to, uh, you know, eat the uh, materials, uh, animals in our teeth. And as a result, you can see dental caries and big problem for your teeth. So they are, uh, how to say, negative biofilm, not good for us, but uh, beneficial bacteria, which form biofilm on the root surface or plant uh, leaf surface or our intestinal layer, they are good biofilm because those bacteria are beneficial. So beneficial bacteria as well as uh, uh, harmful, both can do biofilm. But if pathogenic bacteria um, uh, form a biofilm in your intestine and can cause ulcer, it is problematic, even can lead to uh, you know, cancer. For example, Helicobacter pylori, Perhaps you have heard about this dangerous bacteria uh, uh, can uh, colonize in our intestinal lining on the surface and can cause ulcer which can lead to uh, cancer. So uh, in Bangladesh, there is a test. You can do whether a uh, test, whether you have helicobacter pylori or not, uh, you are carrying or not, there is a medicine also uh, to treat uh, those bacteria. Uh, many of the people in our uh, country, they suffer from gastric and other, uh, you know, uh, uh, chronic uh, indigestion due to the presence of helicobacter pylori. So they, are, they form negative biofilm, several layers of biofilm. So you have to take antibiotic for several doses for longer time. Uh, uh, you, we, uh, we take antibiotics, any antibiotic, uh, you know, uh, we take uh, a certain dose and course because of uh, bacteria remain in biofilm in our body. So first dose can kill the first layer of bacteria and then second, third, and ultimately uh, a certain dose uh, when you complete, then all the uh, bacteria present in the biofilm are killed. This is why I suggest you to take, uh, if you take any uh, antibiotic prescribed by a doctor, you must complete the uh, uh, dose and course. Dose and course is very crucial. Uh, so geothermal vents and subterranean deposits, already I mentioned geothermal vents uh, are uh, also uh, contain high temperature, also contain the uh, uh, bacteria and archaea living organisms. So where are they found biomass on the planet? Most culturing analysis misses over 99% uh, of the microbial population. This is very important point you should remember. You know, um, microbiologists, uh, biotechnologists, they can culture uh, bacteria or fungi, other microorganisms in the laboratory, in the culture media. We have lots of hundreds of culture media. Some media are common. For example, nutrient broth, agar media, or uh, potato dextrose agar media. But uh, 
uh, if you consider all the media, the efficiency of culturing microorganisms available in the environment is only 1%. 99% of the microbial population present in the environment are unculturable. Uh, and this is why it is a big problem. We, our knowledge is limited to 1% of culturable uh, microbial population. But new metagenomic approaches uh, are uh, in place. Uh, biotechnologists can extract the DNA from any soil environment or any other sample and then analyze as they do the sequence of a mixture a DNA by using next generation sequencer. We have now next generation sequencer. And then by using bioinformatics software, you can understand the presence of diverse microorganisms. So without culturing. So you uh, should remember that how we can uh, take uh, the, uh, you know, unculturable microorganism as a biotechnologist, the metagenomics and bioinformatic analysis are useful. Molecular techniques now reveal hidden diversity uh, of the microorganisms, as I already mentioned. How diverse are they? Diverse range of species, uh, earliest life on the earth. Actually, uh, unicellular microorganisms are considered the starting point of life on the planet. Uh, anaerobic, then aerobic, uh, uh, three kingdoms, uh, eukaryote, uh, uh, plants, animals, uh, eubacteria, uh, archaeobacteria, uh, extreme living bacteria. Uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, three billion uh, years have been passed for evolution of those microorganisms in this planet. So uh, the, uh, these are the, uh, 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 some background information how, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, bacteria developed from the archaea uh, and how eukaryotic organisms are, are developed. So plants, animals, all are, you know, complex uh, eukaryotic organisms, actually uh, our ancestor uh, uh, in 3 billion years ago where the unicellular microorganisms. Uh, genomic and metagenomic analysis help us to, uh, you know, detect the uh, micro, uh, identify the microorganisms. Uh, you know, when you isolate a bacteria uh, or a fungi, you use, uh, extract the DNA by using specific primer. In case of bacteria, you do the 16S rRNA gene sequence to identify which bacteria is it. In case of fungi uh, or fungus, uh, you use ITS sequences and other gene you know, amplification to uh, uh, identify the uh, genus and species name. But metagenomics, as I mentioned, this is the new one by using pyro sequencing or next generation sequencing. Uh, you can get uh, all the DNA present in an environmental sample and uh, can go for the uh, sequencing by using pyro sequencer or next generation sequencer and then bioinformatic analysis, all this similar DNA. Every organism has a unique DNA. So you can separate them and can uh, group them, bacteria, fungi, and other organisms. And among the bacteria, then you can go uh, uh, more in-depth analysis whether which genus and which species. Uh, so metagenomics is very important. So these are the some uh, uh, sources of microbial genome sequence link, uh, Sanger Institute UK and uh, other uh, jo uh, joint genome in in institute uh, 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 USA. So please go through uh, and you can find lots of uh, information. So please browse uh, many environmental microorganisms uh, and metagenomic process that you can find in the environment. So they have a very strong role in geochemical nutrient cycle. Already I mentioned, uh, so they use the uh, uh, biomass as well as uh, chemical substances, minerals as their energy source and critical role in cycles of many elements, carbon, oxygen, uh, uh, nitrogen, sulfur, already I mentioned, and we shall discuss later on in this course, 
uh, later uh, sessions, denitrification and uh, other cycle, phosphorus cycle and other things. And these are very important for uh, our agriculture. How do they grow requirements for biodegradation? You need uh, to offer them nutrient, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, like you know, plant and us, they also require essential nutrient elements for their growth and multiplication. Many chemicals supply uh, these uh, micronutrients, trace elements, vitamins, uh, electron acceptors, usually oxygen, some cases, in case of aerobic, they need the oxygen converts and burns carbon uh, uh, substrate to uh, carbon dioxide to get the energy. And they also break down the biomass uh, to get the energy. So um, uh, uh, the whole process of, uh, you know, uh, getting the energy from, uh, uh, for their own survival is the biodegradation. That means this living organism uh, can uh, break down the uh, uh, substances and uh, uh, to get their energy and to their proliferation and by utilizing them, we can, you know, convert the uh, uh, waste. So uh, uh, please go through oxygen and electron acceptor, crucial biodegradation reaction in the environment taken place. So substrate, uh, for example, biomass is a substrate they use uh, and then uh, different metabolism taken place by the microorganism. They release carbon uh, and uh, as carbon dioxide go to the environment and uh, release the uh, energy uh, and grow, uh, 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 you know, uh, multiply and uh, develop the biomass. And after certain age, you know, bacteria and archaea, they also die and release the biomass uh, to the environment. And, you know, they use electron transport chain for uh, a generation of the energy. So in that case, water is uh, in some cases very essential and they can produce the ATP from the ADP uh, uh, through the electron transport chain present in the bacteria uh, or other microorganisms. All microorganisms use energy in the form of uh, ATP. ATP is the energy currency. So here you can see how much electricity or uh, you know, energy uh, they can release from different ions. So anaerobic growth uh, of biodegradation, uh, uh, you know, organic matter fermented, then acetic acid is developed and uh, finally break down uh, water and uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen uh, by the methanogens and finally we get the methane. Uh, that means in anaerobic digestion, the best example is the biogas plant, uh, which uh, release the uh, methane. Methane, we can use carbon dioxide and water also. Uh, methane gas uh, uh, contains some carbon dioxide and water. We shall discuss this electron uh, cell membrane, electron transport chain, fixation of oxygen as the first step in biodegradation, the key step, uh, and uh, then uh, complex, you know, uh, process is going on uh, to degrade the uh, uh, compound. So this is all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, today's uh, talk, uh, how biodegradation is taking place. For example, um, aromatic compound, how uh, breakdown taking place, how the electron in the cell membrane uh, of the microorganism, electron uh, transport as well as, you know, oxidation reduction is taking place. And finally, uh, you can get uh, the uh, uh, final product. So this is all about uh, today's uh, lecture and we may have uh, some uh, discussion. Uh, you can ask uh, some question. And after that, we shall stop our uh, discussion. Today. So do you have any question? If you have any question, please ask me. Because, uh, sir, yes, sir, biodegradation at Juno Amra the material Gulu use Kuris, aromatic ring at Juno Pseudomonas, Ba, Ekitre J spaces Gulu specifically use Koraho Shitaki, sir, Amra laboratory test Kurini, Age, the A Mane Pseudomonas, A spaces Ta, Mane Ui Mane specific biodegradation at Juno, Shop Jabishi Kardjukor. It is Junoki, sir, I'm laboratory teach it Age test Kurikina. A good idea. First, uh, you have to collect the uh, organism 
uh, from the you know uh, the polluted environment because they are abundant there after uh, you know purification uh, in the laboratory uh, you need to identify it what is it uh, by using uh, you know uh, sequencing technology and uh, one way by using in silico analysis you can understand whether it contains any genes responsible for biodegradation or not and other thing is that in the laboratory you have to do small pilot experiment using the waste and use it and uh, study in, uh, thoroughly the mechanism how they are degrading in what rate of degradation and you can compare different uh, you know strain which one is the most powerful because uh, uh, to do uh, something industrially, you need a microorganism which is the smartest and very powerful. So obviously in the laboratory scale, as well as the piloting scale, you have to test it and you have to confirm it. Uh, at a genomic level, you can uh, uh, understand that uh, which gene is ex expressed in the laboratory. You can see uh, the gene expression by using real-time PCR. And when all the knowledges are available and you are confirmed uh, its efficiency, then you can go for the, you know, practical application. Ji, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Any other? Sir, uh, sir if we use a modified microorganism for biodegradation, then if the byproduct is also toxic uh, after degradation the byproduct is also toxic but uh, very little uh, very little compared to the original compound can it be considered as a uh, way for bioremediation or can it be considered uh, regarding biosafety purposes yes genetically modified organism we can use uh, uh, for the biodegradation or bioremediation but you know some countries they have the restriction of uh, exposing the microorganism to the environment that is genetically modified one. In that case, you have to study thoroughly about the, uh, you know, uh, properties of uh, your genetically modified organism and thorough, thorough biosafety, uh, uh, following thorough biosafety guidelines, if you can ensure that it is uh, good at uh, biodegradation or bioremediation, but not harmful to the environment or other organisms, then it is fine. And it is now an advanced technology. In the uh, encased environment, many industries are now using genetically modified one because natural one, it has a certain level of capacity. But if you want to increase the capacity 5,000 times more, you need to uh, you know, uh, integrate gene and do genetic engineer uh, like, you know, we uh, produce insulin by using uh, yeast, uh, genetically engineered yeast uh, for the uh, diabetic patient. Thank you. Any more question? Tanis Fatima? Sumaya Talukdar, any question? This is a small group. Uh, I love it. Uh, so you can ask the question and we can have more interaction uh, than the uh, large group. Uh, in the previous uh, course, uh, you are 27 and it was hard for me to get uh, questions from all the students as well as to ask questions to uh, uh, all the students. Sumaya, are you listening to me? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, ha have you understood uh, the lecture? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I have a small question. Uh, yes. Uh, sir, uh, our question is, sir, I am not sure that we have technology, sir, we have grown up, we have been doing this for a long time, but we have been doing this for a long time, but we have been doing this for a long time. But, sir, our question is, how many days have been working on this technology? environmental mutation uh, it's a good question. Uh, you know uh, uh, as a human how many years you can survive uh, as a human we can survive maximum 130 years or so uh, not more than that uh, there is no record or like that uh, you cannot survive 5000 years similarly in case of any technology 
either it is biotechnology or non biotechnology every technology even your computer your mobile phone it has a life span okay uh, so a microorganism uh, if you uh, found, i have found suitable uh, for a bioremediation or biodegradation of certain waste uh, it does not mean that it does not give you guarantee that you can use it for indefinite period of time so uh, uh, you, you when you start uh, uh, of using it uh, you can find a certain uh, time maybe better organisms you discovered from the environment so better technology available around you then you can replace it this is one point another point is organism can be mutated and may lose its efficiency like the you know living organism also gradually lose the efficiency for example the metabolic activity in my uh, cell uh, and your cell is different uh, after 50 metabolic activity gradually uh, go down like you know computer my computer uh, i bought it in 2012 and uh, the efficiency uh, of this computer now poorer than the uh, before now it is giving lots of trouble so uh, in case of living uh, or non-living technology you have to understand that all technology uh, uh, have uh, its certain uh, uh, lifespan uh, not for indefinite period of time uh, and it is a very nice analogy uh, from our you know practical experiences very good question yes sir thank you sir welcome abdullah rahat Can you listen us? Do you have it any is, question? Uh, do, sir, you, do you have I, I do have a question. Yes. Sir, no question, sir. Okay. Fatima? Do you have any question? If you have no question uh, from next class, I shall ask you a question. So it is your choice whether you ask the question or <laughs> I ask you a question. Fatima, can you listen us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have any question? Uh, no, sir, I don't have any question at this moment. Have uh, you understood maybe, the lecture? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. How do you feel? Is it interesting course? Yes, sir. Obviously. Yes, it is very interesting course uh, uh, in relation to your life. Uh, you know, um, in, uh, in your undergrad, uh, you have lots of courses. Uh, you had lots of courses in your masters you have lots of courses but in your life <laughs> very few of uh, uh, the contents will be useful what would happen uh, at certain uh, stage of your life 98 percent of uh, the courses you studied uh, uh, in your university you will forget but some of the courses they have the impact in your life related to your life, your environment. Uh, and obviously, uh, as a teacher, uh, my job is to train you uh, to adapt to the changing environment. New things will come, new discipline will come. So I shall uh, try to train you so that even new knowledge, new disciplines, uh, uh, when uh, they appear uh, in your uh, lifespan, so that you can cope up with that. This is why I advise my students to read the journal paper, new discovery, to cope up with the new uh, things which has not, uh, you know, uh, which uh, uh, have not been included in your uh, course lecture as, as well as in the textbook. So this is most important. Thank you so much. Uh, any more question from anyone? Okay. If no question, uh, I should say you thank you. 
uh, for listening the lecture and I hope uh, in the next class you will enjoy more. Thank you, sir. Sir, assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.